Fate plays a cruel hand as a writer attempts to woo the newly single prom queen and is hilariously foiled at every turn. At a high school graduation ceremony, rumors about a party at Molly's, a wealthy senior, begin circulating. Preston, a literary journalist club member, hears about the popular jock Mike breaking up with Amanda, his longtime crush. After the ceremony, he talks to Denise, his best friend, and tells her that the popular couple's breakup is a sign that he should confess his feelings to Amanda at the party. Denise is annoyed with a sudden change of plans, especially since Preston is leaving for Boston the following day. She scolds him for dwelling on the past instead of moving forward. The writer justifies his feelings for Amanda, claiming that they have a connection that goes back to the day they met, when they were both late for school and ended up in the same class, seated next to each other and eating the same snack. However, he hesitated in volunteering to tour her around campus, thus losing his chance to Mike. Despite Denise's reluctance, they eventually go to Molly's party. Meanwhile, Mike and his boys are discussing his breakup with Amanda. Jake is in disbelief that Mike would break up with her, and Ben wonders if they should break up with their girlfriends too. TJ agrees and comments that their girlfriends are lame anyway. The prom king shares his belief that college women are better, urging his friends to break up with their current partners as college holds more opportunities. After his rousing speech, they all head to the party. Elsewhere, William, the class valedictorian and overachiever, expresses his hatred for Mike, listing several instances of his bullying. With the help of Jeff and Murphy, they devise a plan to knock him out and take incriminating photos of him at the party. After finalizing their plan, they leave to carry out the plan. Simultaneously, Kenny and his gang are at a convenience store, where Kenny shows his two friends his backpack full of items he prepared for his first time. Determined to lose his virginity at the party, his friends are skeptical, but Kenny remains confident and struts off to the party. Before entering the party, Preston shows his best friend the letter he's giving the prom queen. As she teases him about it, Barry Manilow's song Mandy begins playing, and the relation to Amanda further convinces Preston that they're fated. Denise, however, tells him that she heard it was just a song about Barry's dog. They walk up to the party and are greeted by Molly. Inside, they're immediately accosted by Vicky, forcing them to sign her yearbook. When Kenny arrives at the party with his friends, he immediately separates from them to start looking for potential partners. Meanwhile, the Love Burger band begins setting up for their first ever gig. Walter, the vocalist, reminds his bandmates not to screw up, especially since there might be a talent scout listening according to the drummer. The guitarist tells them to shut up while the bassist is glad they brought the band's merch with them. Meanwhile, the nerds are carrying out their plan to ambush Mike at the pool house. Murphy is worried that William will get too drunk and forget the plan while trying to blend in. The valedictorian assures him that he's prepared a manual to guide his alcohol intake. Jeff is impressed with William's level of preparation. Soon, the docs arrive, proudly announcing their presence. They spot their girlfriends, and Mike reminds his friends to break up with them. Jake tries to initiate the conversation, but Amanda's arrival interrupts him. The party goers take notice of Amanda's presence. She walks by a flustered Preston, and her friends quickly surround her. Preston looks for Amanda, and and his best friend points to her in one of the rooms, causing the writer to panic. Before approaching the prom queen, he asks if Denise will be okay. Despite her antisocial tendencies, she assures him she'll be fine. Preston peeks into the room and overhears Amanda and her friends talking. Beth says Mike is the best guy in school, but the prom queen retorts that school is over. As she gets up to leave, Rachel calls Mike a jerk, and Cindy vehemently agrees. Amanda exits the room, and Preston malfunctions, once again missing his chance. Meanwhile, Kenny tries and fails to get women to notice him. At the beer station, William starts drinking and soon becomes too drunk to follow his manual. Preston is searching for Amanda when he bumps into an old classmate, who brings up their previous mishaps. He spots the prom queen by a couch and sits next to her. She smiles at him and as the writer tries to initiate conversation, his talkative classmate interjects with more embarrassing stories. So Preston steps out to avoid further embarrassment. When they leave, Amanda Amanda's cousin Ron approaches her, acting concerned about her unexpected breakup. Meanwhile, the writer berates his chatty classmate for spoiling his chance to talk to Amanda. When he returns to the couch, the prom queen is no longer there. Elsewhere, Mike tries to convince TJ to break up with Rachel, but he couldn't turn down her proposal of later spending time with her in a room with well-placed mirrors. Disappointed, Mike walks off. 
Denise, on the other hand, is feeling awkward and alone at the party. As Loveburger gets ready to perform, Walter notices the bassist wearing their shirts, prompting the guitarist to also want to wear one and the drummer to put on his cowboy hat. The band argues on stage about their outfits. As they argue, someone flicks a cigarette near some confetti, causing a small fire. Molly spots it and quickly puts it out, but while she's on the ground, she smells something foul and starts searching for the source. Meanwhile, Kenny overhears a heartbroken woman venting to her bed best friend about her cheating boyfriend. She expresses her desire to get back at him by hooking up with the first guy who approaches her. Kenny's eavesdropping makes him tip over, but he uses the opportunity to talk to the heartbroken woman. She invites him to the pool house, but Kenny politely excuses himself to freshen up first. However, there's a long line at the bathroom, so Kenny looks for other options. He approaches Molly, who's currently furious because someone vandalized her family portrait, prompting Kenny to mention seeing the exchange student with a black marker. She thanks him by allowing him upstairs, but instructs him not to close the bathroom door because it's broken. Excited, Kenny rushes up to the bathroom and starts practicing his moves. However, in the process, he accidentally wets his pants. Meanwhile downstairs, Denise gets hit by a stray brownie and sneaks upstairs to wash it off. However, she accidentally walks in on Kenny in a compromising position. Their resulting panic causes the door to close, getting them stuck in the bathroom. On top of the pool house, Murphy wonders how William is doing. Inside, William is too drunk to remember their plans, but he's having the time of his life. On the dance floor, Mike beckons his friends over to discuss the breakups, but they inform him that they have to postpone it until after a concert in a few months. Hearing this, the prom king leaves in frustration. Elsewhere, Amanda admits to Ron that dating Mike had made her feel popular, which was a drastic change from being unnoticed at her old school. However, he never matured during their four years together, but she was afraid of being alone if she broke up with him. She also confesses that her entire identity revolved around being Mike's girlfriend. Outside, Preston is monologuing about his letter to the prom queen, believing it symbolizes the concept of soulmates. He's hoping that Amanda will give him a chance, and they might discover why their paths have aligned now that she's single and he's holding a letter that confesses four years of unrequited love for a girl who's only known as Mike's girlfriend. Preston asks for words of encouragement, but he's monologuing to the exchange student who has no idea what he's saying. Meanwhile, Kenny and Denise are still stuck in the bathroom. As the annoyed man fails to get out, he mentions that a woman is waiting for him to have a fun time. Unbeknownst to him, the heartbroken woman has reconciled with her boyfriend. Elsewhere, Amanda's vulnerability prompts Ron to take advantage of her. Unfortunately, Preston sees them and misinterprets the situation, and he immediately leaves. Dejected. Disgusted, the prom queen pushes her cousin away and storms off, while Ron runs after her fearing she might tell his parents. Outside, Preston throws away his letter as he's leaving the party. However, a series of events leads to the letter ending up in front of Amanda, and she reads it. In the backyard, Mike desperately tries to woo some of his former classmates to get a new girlfriend, but the women reject him because of a time when he insulted them before. Meanwhile, upstairs, Denise and Kenny's argument shifts to the topic of when they stopped being friends because Kenny was too fixated on being popular to hang out with her. On the other hand, Preston retreats to a sports field, where he laments that everything seems to hint that he and Amanda are faded but he can't accept why she was with someone else. Then he hears the radio announcer encourage listeners to call the station, as Barry Manilow will be answering their calls live. This prompts Preston to make a call and ask if Mandy was actually about his dog. As the writer is on the phone, a woman dressed in an angel costume rushes over and demands to use the phone, claiming it's an emergency. When she hears that Preston is calling a radio station, she rudely hangs up the call and takes over the booth. Initially angry, Preston calms down when the woman explains that her car has broken down, and she needs a cab while he's just making a call to a radio station. Her summary of the situation makes him realize that he's a loser. Meanwhile, William's friends amuse themselves by playing with their flashlights, but accidentally lose them in the process, leaving them in complete darkness. At the sports field, seeing Preston's dejected face, the woman tries to comfort him. She recounts a story where fate is the central theme, grabbing his attention. Ultimately, she says that fate can only take someone so far, and the final few steps are for the person to take. When the woman's cab arrives, she warns him not to make the same mistake she did by not taking the final steps. This inspires Preston, and he heads back to the party. At the party, Loveburger disbands before even playing a single song. Seeing the stage empty, a random guy gets on 
on with his boombox. William recognizes the song and rushes on stage to perform. His energy slowly captivates the crowd, and soon he becomes a bona fide rock star. Outside, Mike runs into Trip, a popular jock from the class ahead of him who is now in college. The upperclassman shatters Mike's expectations of college, telling him that being a freshman jock doesn't hold any social value there. Trip advises him to stay with Amanda, saying he's lucky to have her. Not wanting to end up like him, Mike looks for Amanda to get back together. Meanwhile, the prom queen is asking around at the party, determined to learn who Preston is. She eventually encounters Mike, who slyly suggests they get back together. However, when a crowd begins to form, he changes his tone and loudly proclaims that he's giving Amanda the opportunity to get back with him. Amanda publicly rejects him, putting him in his place with sharp words. Mike in turn threatens her by saying that no one else will want her. She looks at the letter and confidently answers that someone does want her. As she walks away, the crowd begins to laugh at Mike, and he retreats, embarrassed. After the public refusal, the prom queen is bombarded with creepy proposals. When Preston finally confesses his love for her, she immediately assumes it's just another delusion guy lusting after her. She lashes out at him and storms off as the partygoers cheer her humiliation of the writer. Meanwhile, William remembers his plan for revenge against the prom king, but when he finds his bully in a vulnerable state, he ends up comforting him instead. Upstairs, Kenny and Denise tease each other about their fashion choices. Suddenly, Kenny kisses Denise, but he doesn't know what to do next and stays silent. Amused, she takes charge of the situation. Concurrently, Vicky sees the prom queen leaving the party and asks her to sign the yearbook. Amanda uses it to check what Preston looks like and upon seeing his picture, she is disappointed in herself for humiliating him. She quickly walks back in to find the writer, but unfortunately, Preston has already left. Meanwhile, Denise and Kenny are awkwardly trying to make things happen. Unexpectedly, William and Mike end up bonding over alcohol and the prom king apologizes for his past bullying. On stage, the love burger reconcile after their earlier argument. Elsewhere, Kenny's friends take their hood persona too far and end up getting chased out of the party. Upstairs with Denise's help, Kenny finally achieves his goal. Unable to find Preston, Amanda eventually leaves the party. Soon after, the police arrive and break up the party, resulting in pandemonium. Mike beckons William to hide in the pool house unaware of the awaiting ambush. In the darkness, the nerds proceed with their plan by tackling them down and making them unconscious. The nerds then dress up the unconscious pair in a humiliating outfit before taking a photo with a Polaroid. Afterwards, they shine their flashlights and realize that it's William and Mike but they flee upon seeing the police arriving. As a result, the unconscious pair are taken into custody. Meanwhile, in the upstairs bathroom, Kenny's first time is a disappointment, and he blames Denise for it, offending her. Just then, Molly bursts in. The two frantically leave, and outside, Kenny follows his friend to apologize and they reconcile. Meanwhile, William wakes up in jail and is quickly released. The sheriff informs him that Mike took all the blame for forcing him to drink until he passed out. That night at home, Amanda removes the remaining reminders of her relationship with the prom king. Meanwhile, Preston tosses and turns in bed. The following day outside a diner, Preston and Denise meet up, and the woman admits to her relationship with Kenny. Embarrassed, she changes the topic to Amanda, and the writer wordlessly conveys the bad news of his rejection. He expresses his doubts that fate is real, but he's glad that the experience shaped him into a better person. As he leaves, Denise declares that fate is real, except it just works in unexpected ways. Later, William sees Mike and his friends inside the diner, and thanks his bully for bailing him out of trouble. Assuming they're now friends, he tries to sit down with them, but is immediately rebuffed and ridiculed out of the diner. Soon, William went to Harvard, where he became one of the most popular students. He also formed a software company that is now valued at $40 million. He is currently dating a supermodel. Mike, on the other hand, drank too much in college and lost his football scholarship. He is now 40 pounds overweight and was fired from his job at a car wash after some incriminating Polaroids surfaced. At the diner, Denise enters and sits beside Kenny. Five minutes later, Denise dumped him. Ten minutes later, they found a bathroom and got back together. At the train station, Preston is about to board the train but is stunned when Amanda grabs his attention. She tells him that his father told him he'd be at the station, and the writer notices she's holding his letter. She asks if he's leaving now, and he says yes because he has a workshop to catch in Boston. Amanda congratulates him and tells him to go, saying perhaps it's fate for things to end this way. She shakes his hand and walks away before turning back as Preston is walking towards his gate. However, he remembers 
realized that he can't let fate do everything, so he takes the final steps and runs after her. He tells Amanda that he can take a later train before finally kissing her, which he passionately reciprocates. Seven hours later, Preston finally got on a train to Boston. Amanda wrote him a letter for every day that he was away and they're still together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.